Good evening, everyone. Thanks ever so much for coming out. Long time no see. Um, it's good to be back. It's good to have a party active again. And God knows we need it. Things have uh, gotten a little bit odd this year, haven't they? A little bit strange. But, like I say, welcome. Welcome to Leeds. Welcome to 2020. Welcome to For Britain. Welcome to history. And it is history. And history is, as we know, being made all the time, every minute. But I think most of us can agree that some time periods are more significant than others. And to my mind, this time period we're in now is the most significant one for this country since the Second World War. But the difference being that the threat we face today is greater than it was then. It is greater than it was then. Because back then there was a different Britain. There was a Britain that was strong and confident and united. I think we can agree it's none of those things at the moment. Back then the government knew who its enemy was and it identified its enemy. The people knew who the enemy was and trust between the people and the government was high and they were on the same side and they knew who they were fighting and what they were fighting for and we have to be clear about what they were fighting for. They were fighting so that Britain would survive and thrive and that the freedoms won through centuries of debate and bloodshed would be maintained for future generations. That's what they were doing then. But our efforts to save Britain are very, will take a very different form. During the war people believed in the government. Now it's our government that we are obliged to struggle against. The government is our opposition. And trust between the people and the state is now at such a low point that many people actually believe that the state poses a genuine threat to them. And they're right. Because the British government has taken away our free speech with so-called hate legislation. It has imprisoned its own sons and daughters merely for expressing truth and doing so out of love for this nation. But perhaps the most destructive thing it has done is open our borders to millions, knowing that many who come here will seek to destroy us, knowing that it will inevitably, eventually, lead to the end of the very Britain that we are here to defend. The enemy is within. It's in the media, the police, the border farce, the classroom and in Parliament. Now let me change direction for a moment and bring you to North America in 1776. Do we know what happened in North America in 1776? The American Revolution. The victors in the Revolutionary War tore down statues of British kings. This signified the end of British rule and the beginning of the United States of America. After World War II, Nazi symbols and insignia were torn down and destroyed and this symbolised and signified the end of the Nazi period and the beginning of a new journey for Germany. In 2001, to mark the end of religious pluralism and the end of Buddhism in Afghanistan, the Taliban, once and for all, destroyed the statues of the Buddha. In South Africa, to mark the end of apartheid, in Eastern Europe, to mark the end of communism, statues have been toppled, street names changed, history hidden or erased, and all to mark the end of one era and the beginning of another one. So in 2020, statues came down in the UK. So ask yourself this, what does this signify the end of? What era are we leaving and what era are we entering? So let's take our clues from the protagonists and indeed from the statues. And the most significant of these is Winston Churchill. Now his statue didn't come down, but only because that's been kicked into the long grass. It will be taken down in the future. Those who hate Britain simply need more time. 
to brainwash the masses before being so daring as to tear down Winston Churchill. Bringing down Churchill's statue is the mark of the end of a Churchill Britain. That is a Britain of free people, united people, British people. It will mark the end of the fight against fascism and against totalitarianism. So again, ask yourself this. If the era of opposition to totalitarianism comes to an end, what begins? An era of totalitarianism. Now before I go any further, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is politics. This is the war of ideas. It's the eternal battle between liberty and tyranny being fought yet again, this time by us. The fall of statues, sadly, is a victory for totalitarianism. And that's why it's so important that we step up now and stop it. So what happens now? Now, Labour, with no opposition from the Tories, and we all know it, Labour will set about the repackaging and the propaganda exercise. And rather than just tear down statues, they'll give the process a veneer of legitimacy. And they'll go through official channels to destroy history. All Labour councils in this country have committed to reviewing our street names, statues and memorials. And they'll be ruthlessly efficient too. Look how quickly Sadiq Khan took down a statue in London. If only he was so on the ball when it came to fighting crime. Now London is the capital city and so much of the country's history took place there. It has buildings centuries and centuries old that signify a Britain of prosperity and strength. And Sadiq Khan may well now bring the bulk of it down. And we can't stay silent when he does. We can take our clues about the era where we're entering also by looking at those who are pushing for it. The Labour Party. Left-wing journalists, proponents of totalitarianism. Those who speak out against free speech and who hate any form of dissent. You know the kind. You know the kind. They write for The Guardian often. And the start of this era is marked by race, division, fear, and violence. And not only here, but in the United States. Black Lives Matter, a hateful and racist movement, some of whom have vowed to make white people their slaves, are so powerful that they made the police fall to their knees in compliance. The Labour leader fell to his knees in compliance. What an absolute coward. And it didn't even work. Because he had to backtrack, because he, hadn't, he didn't know what they stood for, so he found himself backpedalling. But now Black Lives Matter are setting up their own political party. So they're not even going to vote for Labour. So all of this appeasement, all of this cowardice, all of this cringe-worthy bowing is for nothing. They get nothing for it. Black Lives Matter have set American cities alight and been praised for it by American politicians. And the entire philosophy of this mob is one of exploitation and hate. Black Lives Matter have fabricated a so-called quote-unquote racism and fixed this label to everyone who won't share their worldview. This will be the criteria for our review of statutes, whether or not something is quote unquote racist. But we all know that Black Lives Matter see almost everyone as a racist. Everyone who's white, that is. And you might have seen a video traveling around the ether, the social media ether, of a black woman in the United States giving a talk at a university or school or wherever it was. That's the one. <laughs> Dressed in green. It was symbolic of the world at this time in history. It was symbolic of how the world is. 
It was a black woman standing in front of a room full of white people telling them that they're not even human. Black, white people are not even human. You're born to be demons and you stay demons. You're racist and you'll always be racist. And the white people sitting in the audience are nodding along. Yes, yes, I agree. That's the world right now. The whole world is standing in front of white people and saying, you're all devils and we're nodding in agreement. Yes, sir. That's where we are. If there is no evidence of a person's racism, then we have unconscious bias. That's being racist while not being racist. <laughs> and we're supposed to just accept that we're racists, even when we're not, because to not accept it would make you a racist. And you think I'm joking, but I'm not. Not being racist is racist. Recognizing race is racist. Not recognizing race is racist. Adopting aspects of another culture is racist. Not adopting aspects of another culture is racist. It's a farce, in other words. And Black Lives Matter is built entirely on a lie. The word racist, as we know, is not intended to refer to racial hatred or discrimination. It is simply the word used to identify the enemy of the left. And the enemy is anyone who fails to demonstrate sufficient enthusiasm for the new era. Or who doesn't join in the two minutes hate of the newly labelled racists. Just like communist China, in other words. Racist is the identifier of those who must be punished. The punishment is to be unpersoned. And to be unpersoned is to suffer a total loss of basic rights. No lawyer will represent you, no employer hire you, no journalist describe you honestly, no politician will speak in your defence. You might even lose your children. You're done. That's your punishment. And that is what has this country cowering in fear and accepting things that it wouldn't otherwise accept. There is another element to it. A personal element and an emotional element. It's only 80 years ago since the British people were bombed from the skies. And when they clambered into bunkers and underground stations, since pulled, they pulled dead and injured out on the rocks and watched their homes and livelihoods reduced to rubble. But they stood up and they stood firm and they stood together and the Nazis did not win they could not take Britain. I was in Dover recently, and we went to the Battle of Britain Memorial. And it's heartbreaking, and it overlooks a beach where illegal immigrants enter Britain every day. The memorial for those who defended it is overlooking its complete betrayal. But the Nazis couldn't take Britain. Now we have to do whatever and dig deep and find whatever to make sure this lot can't take it either. And many of our elderly who lived through this are still with us. Imagine how they must feel. I get emails from old people all the time telling me I can't, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Some of them have told me I'd, I want to go now because I don't want to see this. I don't want to see any more of this. It's heartbreaking. And we have to do it for them, if for nothing else. But we can and we will win it. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever. And the reason is because our opposition is built on a platform of lies and hatred. And it is. And it is very powerful. And yes, it is winning. It is definitely winning. But history is littered, we know. You know how optimistic I am. History is littered of examples of David overcoming Goliath. It's littered with them. And I know it doesn't always feel like that, but the tide is turning in our direction, and people know. People know for certain now that their country is genuinely threatened. And in that regard, Black Lives Matter have done us a big favour. But this party is committed 
not only to securing a British identity for this country, but to preserving the freedoms that identity represents, or should represent. We will not accept communism, no matter what they call it. If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's communism. And we have to say it again, over and over again, we will not accept communism, whatever new title it's given. And we'll fight it every step of the way. And when the opposition lies, which it will, we will tell the truth. And that's all we have to do. Organise ourselves, stand for election, campaign, and stick to the truth. That's it. Oh, and the tricky bit. Persevere, persevere, persevere. It's one of my favourite words. Our perseverance so far is working. It is working. Everywhere we go, the press are interested in it. We're, we're Dover again. A woman answered the door telling us she was going to call the police because of a leaflet. We put a leaflet through her door, she got upset, she phoned the police. This meant the press came, and instead of a few hundred people getting a leaflet from us, the whole area saw our leaflet because the press printed it. Both sides gave us a long, 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 long quote. And then the woman was on Twitter saying, what did I do? <laughs> I was trying to get them into trouble. But it happens everywhere we go. We have an absolutely golden opportunity coming up in May. That's assuming, assuming we have elections in May. Let's work on the assumption that we do have elections in May. Although, the news today, has anyone seen the news today? A rise in coronavirus cases. No, Do we know what they're setting us up for? Another lockdown. Yeah. That's certainly what I think. I don't want to cause... What's it? The panic. The panic is... is the, yeah, similar. But I do... They, it looks very much like they're setting... Preparing us for another lockdown. It's politicised a lot of people, this lockdown. This coronavirus is politicising people, just as Brexit did. And in some ways, everything that happens is a good thing. Everything that happens that shows us and that teaches the country that they can't trust these governments, that's a good thing. The closer we get to changing things, the more of these things that happen. And while that doesn't really help us in the short term, in the long term, I think it does. So I'm going to read out some of this letter, largely because I wanted to go on video. This is a letter from For Britain Leeds about the demonstrations, the violent mobs tearing down a statue in Bristol, which I, should, I think should go straight back up. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a manifesto pledge for me. Put Edward Colson's statue back up. The nerve of it, the nerve of it. I'm going to read some of this about that time and about the big Black Lives Matter protests that were going on when the rest of us were told to stay home and watch telly and not see your family and not see your friends and some people didn't see elderly relatives. And while that was going on, while we were held on the house arrest, this lot, were mobbing in the streets. And it's brought trust in police even further down than it already was. The, does anyone trust the police to be fair, unbiased? No. I know, I know, I know that the police would not treat me, treat me with fairness, I know it. I know that if I went in front of a judge, not that I would ever get in front of a judge because no lawyer would represent me to get me in front of a judge. You're a liar. Even if I did, even if I did, the judge would rule against me. Because I'm a racist, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. So this was going on while we were locked down. People were mobbing all over the country. Black Lives Matter. And I want to start... Um, I want to read it all, actually. <coughs> I'll read the bulk of it. Firstly, we would draw your attention to the fact that the UK is still under a relaxed lockdown. In these unprecedented times, citizens of Leeds face fines or arrest 
for vis visiting family indoors or meeting in groups of greater than six people. That in itself blows my mind. You might have seen the video I did, my live stream last week or the week before, whenever it was, when I was reading out the government's rules on social distancing. Did you see them? That's from the government's own website. You can go into the pub, but if your neighbours are in the pub, you can't interact with them. I, okay. Someone put in the, in the comments, can you wave at them? <laughs> Am I allowed to, woohoo, across the room, is that okay? Or does the wave cause a coronavirus? What is, absolutely ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Many people are still unable to open their place of business. We destroyed the economy for this, absolutely destroyed it. And people will be poor for decades for it. They really will. And taxes will go up to pay for it. And I told Rishi Sirnak, and I tell him again, one day, give me one day in the Treasury and I'll find you 20 billion to, that you're looking for from taxes. Just one day. We have destroyed our economy for this. Some will lose their jobs and businesses as a direct result of the lockdown measures imposed. Could you please therefore justify why a group of hundreds of far left agitators were allowed to congregate in Leeds city centre on the 6th of June? I assume you had no answer to this. Could you advise how many fines were issued on Saturday for not adhering to lockdown regulations? No answer. Secondly, whilst no vandalism has yet been reported in Leeds, none at all? There was some, but not yet. You will be aware that at these demonstrations in other parts of the country there has been a plethora of damage and destruction. In London, the Winston Churchill statue was defaced. In Bristol, the Edward Colston statue was pulled down. War memorials have been subjected to graffiti. Therefore, could Leeds City Council please advise what action is being taken to prevent vandalism towards Leeds monuments and war memorials? Nothing. Leeds City Council states its intent to, quote, show the city's solidarity with the family of George Floyd against, quote, injustice. To put this into context, we would like to, this is my favorite bit, we would like to remind the council of the facts surrounding the death of George Floyd. George Floyd was a career criminal who had a string of convictions between 1990 and 2007 for narcotics and armed robbery offenses. What a gentle giant, wasn't he? I wanted to do a t-shirt for our shop. I don't know, I don't think Ed was keen on the ideas because it sort of fell away. I wanted to do a t-shirt with a quote from George Floyd on it. And people who could wear it to rallies and things and, and lefties would be, oh look, a quote from George Floyd. And the quote would be, give me the money or I shoot your baby. <laughs> it's not funny, but it is powerful. And I would like to run into a few lefties wearing that t-shirt. His most serious defense which he served time in prison for until 2014 was a home invasion where he held a gun to the stomach of a pregnant woman. The autopsy of George Floyd showed that he died of a heart attack with fentanyl and methamphetamine found in his system. While no one would dispute methods used by police were brutal and unnecessary, his death was a tragic accident, which was most likely caused by a combination of stress and adrenaline. Most likely. And I too have seen the medical report into his by well, the post-mortem report into his death. But it had nothing to do with him anyway. This was just an excuse. This was the hard left on the rampage. And that's why they're so clever as to call themselves something like Black Lives Matter. Because who, how can you argue? They're gonna say what you're saying, Black Lives Don't Matter. If you're against us, you think Black Lives Don't Matter. They picked these names for a reason. Unite Against Fascism, Hope Not Hate, Stand Up To Racism, all the same. There is no evidence to suggest that police response to George Floyd was racially motivated, absolutely, and the whole world went up in flames over nothing. Now taking these facts into account, we believe the language used by Leeds City Council referring to injustice, racism and prejudice are inflammatory and likely to cause tensions among communities within Leeds. I love this approach, by the way, well done. Uh, whilst press and social media may have speculated on a racial motivation to the death of George Floyd, there is no actual evidence to support this. Therefore, we are formally calling on councillors at Leeds, and I'll do the same this evening, 
and councillors actually all over this country to reaffirm their allegiance to our emergency services, to disavow extremist groups such as Black Lives Matter, Antifa and Stand Up to Racism, and to seek to, or that seek to inflame community tensions within the city. I would also like to add to that, and for every council in this country, to assure us of a couple of things. One, that you won't be tearing down statues because some loony lefty somewhere has decided it's racist or was related to someone who was related to someone who was, knew someone who was involved in the slave trade. That's the whole history. That's, that's, it's got nothing to do with racism or slavery. So I want reassurances from all these councils and all these bureaucrats on these councils that they won't dismantle the history of this country. They won't take books out of libraries if they do change street names and statues and memorials. Books are next. There'll be no taking books out of libraries and there'll be no requirement for public sector workers to support Black Lives Matter. I've had a few people in the public sector tell me that they are essentially being obliged to support Black Lives Matter. That has to stop. I think that goes without saying. And people don't have anywhere to go with this. So there's only one thing for it. We have to win power. There's only one thing for it. That's it. That's the job. We can't do it any other way. All of this is caused by Parliament. The curriculum in schools that teaches kids to hate themselves, I don't know if you saw my comparison in how Islam is taught and how Christianity is taught. Astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. So next up is history. I'm going to be looking at how history is taught in schools. I'll do another one on that. But the curriculum is the problem. Policing is the problem. The public sector is the problem. The NHS, across the board. All of that has one layer. About, well, it has two layers, actually. It has local government, which is far more important than most people think. And it's local government that will be tearing down our statues. And that's why we have to stand for local government. And make this a major issue for this party, in labour areas particularly, come next May. Make sure people know. And this week is our Save Our Heritage Week. And we're asking members to go out and do mine on Thursday in Hartlepool, to go out to your memorials, bring some of our leaflets, our Save Our Heritage leaflets, hand them out and make sure people know. Because they don't know. They really don't understand what Labour intends to do to this country. And they often not only know that, but they have to know the importance of it. And the importance of it is that it's the, they intend it to mark the end of an era and to start of a new era. That is what it always represents. Tearing down statues, memorials, street names, that's what it always represents. The end of one and the beginning of another. This time is no different. It represents the end of the Britain we know and the beginning of a Britain that none of us want to live in. And I think we have a responsibility and a duty to make sure we don't leave that Britain to the generations to come. I think we, and shall we have a short break and then we can do a Q&A? Is that all right? Or do you not want to have a break? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, we'll have a short break. We'll have a short break. Okay, thanks very much, everyone, for listening to me.